Hi, my name is John Dooley, and I am the entomologist for the United States Department of Agriculture, Plant Protection and Quarantine at San Francisco, California. My specialty is that I identify all of the white flies and armored scales that accompany shipments coming into the country from all over the world. So take out your Chrysum Phalus Aeonitum. These are obvious, and they're even more obvious on your slide. So you're looking at the couplet number four again. Now take a look at the Mako ducks. And the best Mako ducks on this species to look for, or you can do it e e anywhere, is actually on a domino segment. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah. It's, it's go above the pygidium, and you'll see a cluster of Mako ducks. You see the Mako ducks at the lower uh, field of vision right here. You can see them. Those are pretty nice. And then you have another set right over here. I'll focus it in. Let's come out. This is indicative of this species. It has only one set of Mako ducks on this abdominal segment. If it has one on here and one on here, there's a whole new species called Biofasciculatus. But Chrysophilus aeonitum has this one. Now, if you look at high power and look at the end of those tubes, unfortunately, this power doesn't go that high. Let's see. You look at this particular one, I hope you can see it, and then look at your microscope. You notice it's actually just one bar, but it's kind of a, uh, in this case, it's deflated a little bit in the center. But they're extremely long and they're very, very sh uh, small. This is a one bar, unless it's really obvious, like on your uh, pagidio microducts on the margin, where they're very, very thick, very large, and that um, you have to take more care. Let's go down to the pagidio margin for a second and look at some of the micro ducts there. Oh, let me do a little fine tuning. Unfortunately, unfortunately you see both the, uh, oh, here they are. If you look at uh, this one right up here and look on yours, you'll notice it's actually only one bar and then it's connected to the tube. It's inflated usually at the base and then the tube gets even more narrow. There are some of these that are one bar. Now this, this is where you're gonna get confused. This looks like two bars, but it's really not. Okay, so it's, it's, it's uh, I don't have an answer to as to why it does this at times, but this is all one bar here. The other thing is the more important one on this particular one, and you see these, this is one of the more common ones. I mentioned earlier paraphysis. You can see them over here. These come at the base of the lobe, up, base of the lobe up. You notice the length of these are much longer than the length of the uh, medium lobe. And that's also very important because the next group you're gonna look at, they're gonna be much shorter, very minute, and it's gonna be a different genus. You see these sets, and you notice on this particular genus, for the most part, they're at the base of the lobes. There are other genera that if you see something like this, but you see maybe three in between and one coming out of the center between the lobes, that's a different genus. We're not gonna go into that because it caused a lot more confusion at this point. But when you see something like this, you're gonna run into the related genera. And then there are some other genera that these type of structures go all the way up, the pygidium, uh, quite a ways up, but then they usually decrease in size as they go farther anterior toward the end of the pygidium. But this is very, very important where, where they're really elongated. and. Uh, 
the rule of thumb is that if the length of any one of these, or you take the longest one, and there's much longer than the length of the medium lobe, it has to be the medium lobe, not the second lobe. There are others that have elongated second lobes. Then it's going to be actually this group here. This one they call um, Chrysophilus aenitum because of that one cluster above the pygidium that I showed you earlier. It has two or three on each duct forming. And then it has pygidial furrows. This is another uh, important uh, for this particular one, important, uh, what do you call it, structure. You see these, uh, how these ducts are coming up this way and they're, and they're, they're, they're forming the elongate tubes going way out? Here are the orifices, or the, actually these are probably the bases. Anyway, the point is that they're forming a, like a series or a row, anywhere from two to three wide, two to three rows. And that is also very important. It's usually going to be this one, this row, and this row. And if it's, in this case, it's only two, so it's usually going to be A and item, especially with that uh, duct arrangement, uh, pre-pygidial pre duct arrangement. But if they have three rows and you notice that, then it may be a different species. So this is something else you have to recognize. Uh, when you go down, where these come out of is, they're usually the furrows come out between the second and the third lobe, and then the, the second furrow they talk about is the one between the third lobe and the position of the CD for the fourth lobe, where the fourth lobe would be if it developed. In this case, uh, some may think that this is a lobe, some may consider it, some may not. But anyway, these are, are known to have three uh, obvious lobes along the pygidium, all single, nothing bilobate. And uh, oh, and then and on this particular species, the plates are various. Uh, see how the plate here? This is the best example. How it forms like two big teeth. It's like a claw. Whereas these plates are all fringed. Let me try to focus in some of the others. See how these plates are fringed? But this only has two big claws. Pincers. This genus, this species of this genus, the plate beyond the third lobe, the second and sometimes the third plate beyond the third lobe forms this. Other species will form a clavate club. Other species besides those two will also form a fringe plate for that plate. So this varies considerably and the shape of the plates vary considerably from what they call chelate, which is claw-like, uh, furcate, which is finger-like, where it's split like fork-like, to fringed, and to simple, which is a basic simple one structure coming either to a blunt um, or a point.